The Book of Job is one of the most profound and challenging books in the Bible, often classified as wisdom literature. It explores deep themes such as human suffering, divine justice, and the complexity of faith. Number 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 Structure and Summary The book is structured into several distinct sections, the prologue chapters 1 to 2, the dialogues chapters 3 to 31, the interlude chapters 32 to 37, the divine speeches chapters 38 to 41, and the epilogue chapter 42. Number 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 1, Prologue Chapters 1 to 2. The story begins with an introduction to Job, a wealthy and pious man who lives in the land of Uz. He is described as blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Job has seven sons and three daughters, a large number of livestock, and many servants, making him the greatest man among all the people of the East. The scene then shifts to the heavenly court, where God praises Job's righteousness. However, Satan, or the accuser, challenges Job's integrity, arguing that Job is righteous only because of his prosperity and protection from God. Satan suggests that if Job's blessings were taken away, he would curse God. God allows Satan to test Job by taking away his wealth, children, and health, but forbids Satan from killing him. Job loses his livestock, servants, and all his children in a series of tragic events. Despite these calamities, Job remains steadfast in his faith declaring, The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Satan then afflicts Job with painful sores all over his body. Job's wife urges him to curse God and die, but Job refuses, maintaining his faith and integrity. Number 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 2. Dialogues, Chapters 3 to 31. The bulk of the book is a series of poetic dialogues between Job and his three friends, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar. They come to console him, but quickly turn to debating the cause of his suffering. Job's Lament, Chapter 3. Job curses the day of his birth and expresses a deep desire for death, lamenting his suffering and questioning the meaning of life in such pain. First Cycle of Speeches, Chapters 4 to 14. Eliphaz's Speech. Eliphaz suggests that Job's suffering must be a punishment for some hidden sin, as God punishes the wicked and rewards the righteous. He urges Job to repent. Job's response, Job refutes Eliphaz's claims, insisting on his innocence. He challenges the notion that suffering is always a direct result of sin and expresses his confusion over why the righteous suffer while the wicked prosper. Bildad's speech. Bildad supports Eliphaz's argument, emphasizing the justice of God and the traditional belief that the wicked are punished. Job's response. Job again defends his innocence and expresses his anguish, but he also begins to hope for a mediator between himself and God. Zophar's speech. Zophar is the harshest of the three, accusing Job of hiding his sins and deserving even greater punishment. Job's response. Job maintains his integrity, asserting that the wisdom of God is beyond human understanding, and laments the seemingly unjust suffering of the innocent. Second Cycle of Speeches, Chapters 15 to 21. The friends continue to argue that Job's suffering must be due to some sin, while Job grows increasingly frustrated, maintaining his innocence and questioning the justice of God. Third Cycle of Speeches, Chapters 22 to 31. The friends' arguments become more repetitive and harsh, while Job remains steadfast in his claim of innocence. He reflects on the apparent randomness of suffering and the elusive nature of God's justice. Number 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 3. Interlude. Elihu's Speeches, Chapters 32 to 37. Elihu, a younger man who has been silent until this point, enters the discussion. He criticizes both Job and his three friends. He rebukes Job for questioning God's justice, 
and suggests that suffering may be a form of divine discipline rather than punishment. Elihu emphasizes God's greatness and the importance of humility before him. Number 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 4. Divine Speeches, Chapters 38 to 41. Finally, God speaks to Job out of a whirlwind. Instead of answering Job's questions directly, God poses a series of rhetorical questions that highlight the vastness and complexity of the universe questions that Job cannot possibly answer. These questions underscore the limits of human understanding and the majesty of God's creation. God's speeches focus on the wonders of the natural world, the intricacies of various animals, and the forces of nature. The underlying message is that God's ways are far beyond human comprehension, and therefore, Job and humanity should trust in God's wisdom, even when his ways are inscrutable. Job responds with humility, acknowledging his limitations and the greatness of God. He repents for questioning God's justice, though he maintains his innocence regarding the cause of his suffering. Number 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 5. Epilogue Chapter 42. In the epilogue, God rebukes Job's three friends for their incorrect assumptions about the nature of suffering and instructs them to offer sacrifices. Job prays for them, and God restores Job's fortunes, giving him twice as much as he had before. Job is blessed with more children, and he lives a long and prosperous life, dying at an old age full of days. Number 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 themes and significance. The book of Job grapples with the perennial question of why the righteous suffer, a question that is not fully answered within the text. Instead, it challenges simplistic understandings of divine justice, emphasizing that human beings cannot fully comprehend God's ways. It encourages faith and trust in God, even in the face of inexplicable suffering. Job's story is a powerful exploration of the human condition, the limits of human wisdom, and the nature of God's justice. It invites readers to reflect on the mystery of suffering and the appropriate response to the trials of life. The book ultimately portrays a God who is both just and compassionate, though his ways are beyond human understanding. 